good evening good evening uh, good afternoon sorry good afternoon this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice we will be glad in him it's a special day this is a special day it's a special day and i believe you are prepare yourself to receive what God have in store for us. It's a special day. I'm waiting for people to join. Today is Good Friday. I want many people to join, as many as, as they can join us today, uh, this afternoon. Oh God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Forever you are God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We may not be able to meet, but we can we can share the word of God together. Thank you, Father. I'm waiting for people to join. I'm invite friends, invite family. Let them join us. Let them join us this afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let people join us. Invite as many as you can invite. Let them join us. Let them join us. Let them join us. Oh God, I'm so excited for what God has done in our life for making it possible for all to see this day. Invite family, invite friends, let them join us, let them join us, let them join us. Oh God, oh God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. God is good and his mercy Endure it forever. I want you to invite friends and family, invite people, let people join us. Let them join us this afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will be glad in Him. Let people join us. Invite them to join us. Oh God, oh God, you are God, you are God. You are wonderful God, you are wonderful God, you are excellent God. Let people join us because we are going to we are going to look at fifteen together this afternoon. Today is a Good Friday, it's a special day in our life, and I believe God that God is going to speak to us. God is going to bless us through His word, through His word. And we're waiting for for people, more people to join. Oh God, oh God, you are God, you are God, you are God, you are God. I'm so excited because. I know that our Redeemer uh, liveth. I know our Redeemer liveth. What he has promised that he will do, he will definitely do it. Oh. Invite friends, invite family, let them join us. Let them join us. Let them join us. Let them, let them be partaker of what God is about to do this afternoon. Let them be partaker of what God is about to do this afternoon. I believe God has prepared our mind he has prepared our heart so that we might receive from him. We might receive from him. We might receive from the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, on, on, on Wednesday, I started by look at why Christ came to this world. Why Christ came? Why Christ came to this world? And I explained that there's a three reasons why Christ came. The first reason is for our deliverance. The second reason is for our redemption. The third reason is for our restoration. Deliverance, redemption, and restoration. And on Wednesday, we look at deliverance. How Christ delivered us from sin. How he delivered us from sin. How he deliver us from dominion of sin and Satan. And today, 
We are going to look at redemption because exactly at 3 o'clock, Christ he said, it is finished. He made a, a, a statement, a final statement, he said, it is finished. And today, I want to look at redemption. But what has finished? What has finished? We established on, on Wednesday that he came to deliver us, he came to redeem us, and he came to restore what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to the book of John chapter 19. The book of John chapter 19. I will read from verse 28 to 30. The book of John chapter 19, verse 28 to 30. I want you to follow me. And if somebody can put it uh, online for some people that have, have joined later so that they can see, they can see the Bible pass, passage. The book of John chapter 19. Chapter 19, I will read from verse 28 to 30. John 19, 28 to 30. Oh God. And after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said at us. And now there was a set that was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they fill it with sponge, with vinegar, and put it upon the easel, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is finished. And bowed down his head, and gave us the ghost. He, he said, everything is now accomplished. Everything is now accomplished. The work of deliverance is accomplished. The work of redemption is accomplished. He said, it is finished. But with this particular sentence, I believe you are familiar with this particular sentence, that it is finished. When he said, it is finished, what does he mean? What does he mean? Because remember what happened in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, God placed cares upon mankind because they disobeyed him. And the rule is that the soul that sin must die. The soul that sin. Let, before I continue, let's go to um, Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter... Before we go to the book of Ezekiel, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. So that we can have a clear picture of what... Christ has done for us. Galatians chapter 3, I will read from verse 13 to 15. Galatians chapter 3, I will read verse 13 to 15. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that anger on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. But what is the cause of the law? The cause of the law. Now let's go to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, 18. Verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Now, uh, Galatians make us understand that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. But what is the cause of the law? Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The soul that sinned is shall die. The soul that sin, they are the cause of the law. That the soul that sin shall die. But for, for you not to die, for me not to die, Christ came to redeem us from the cause of the law. The cause of the law says that the soul that sin must die. The soul that sin must die. I said, the soul that sin, that sinned, is a die. The sons are not bear the iniquity of the father, 
Let us say this, Father, bear the iniquity of the son, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Because in those days, he said, the soul, because of the law, says that the soul that sin must die. And the, and the, and the power makes us understand in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to, to 15, he said, Christ has redeemed us from that cause, so that you don't need to die anymore. You don't need to die anymore. What you need to do is just confess your sin and you'll be forgiven. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He has redeemed us from the cause of the law. And the cause of the law says that the soul that sinned must die. And, and the cause of the law says that when you sin, you will be sick. When you sin, you will be oppressed. When you sin, Satan will, Satan will, will control your life. But now Christ came so that we might be free. We might be free. Because the cause of the law says that the soul that sinned must die. And now for, for, for what he has done on the cross, you don't need to die anymore. You don't need to die anymore because the price has been paid. The price has been paid. Is that it is finished? Now let's look at what is finished. What he has finished on the cross. What he has finished. What is has finished. And when you, if you follow the book of John chapter 19, 28 to 30, it says that Jesus has realized that every the scripture has been accomplished. He, has, he fulfilled all the scripture. Of, he fulfilled all the scripture. That everything that is written about him has been accomplished. What he has finished. Defeat of Satan. Now Satan is, be, is being defeated because Christ has paid the price. The requirement, what is required of man to be free from the, from the bondage of Satan, Christ paid. He paid. Through his blood. He paid. He paid. The defeat of Satan, in the, in, let's go to the book of John chapter 12. The book of John chapter 12, I will read first. John chapter 12, I will read Verse 31 to 32. Let's go to John chapter 12. Oh God, you are, you are wonderful God. You are wonderful God. John chapter 12. I will read from verse 31 to 32. John chapter 12, 31 to 32. He said, now is the judgment of this war. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the head, will draw all men unto myself. The defeat of the Satan. He defeated Satan. He defeated Satan because when Adam and Eve sinned against God, Satan took the advantage and, and took control of the affairs of the world. But, when, but, but Christ died. He paid the price. He took the authority from the Satan. He, he took the power from Satan. He took the key Satan collected from him, uh, uh, Adam. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He defeats Satan. He breaks it down the middle wall. The middle wall. So that we, you don't need any high priest to, to, be, to be a mediator. You don't need an intermediary between you and God anymore. Now you cannot approach the throne room of grace with boldness, whereby you can say, Abba, Father. Remember, in those days, it's only high priest is permitted to enter the Holy of Holies. But now, Christ paid the price. He broke down the wall of partition so that the, the, uh, the, the throne room of grace is open to all believers. Christ redeemed you. you. He redeemed me from the cause of the law. So that you don't, you don't need anybody to stand in the way. You don't need anybody to make himself more, more earlier than you. That, okay, you have to go through me before you can, you can enter to the, uh, the throne room of grace. No. Christ, he broke the, he said, it is finished. The price has been paid. He defeated Satan. He broke down the, 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 uh, the, the, the wall of partition so that now you can access to God. 24-7. You can pray anywhere, anytime, any day. 
Remember in the holy days, high priest will enter the holiest of holy once in a year. Once in a year. And he must first atone for his own sin. But now, you don't need that anymore. You don't need that anymore. You can, you can enter into the throne room of grace. By the blood of Christ, you can enter with boldness. With boldness. Now, you can, whatever you burn on this earth, will burn in heaven. Whatsoever, whatsoever you lose on this earth, will be losing in heaven. Because the price has been paid. He said, it is finished. It is finished. You are not under any bondage anymore. Don't, don't walk and dunk us. Don't walk with your head down. No. Walk with boldness. Because the price has been paid on your behalf. The price has been, has been paid on your behalf. There's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You are not condemned anymore. The, the price you pay, you pay for your sin in the past, present, and the one you haven't committed yet. I want you to walk, I want to, to walk with, with, with that knowledge that you are not under, under the bondage of Satan anymore. You are not under the bondage of sin anymore. You are not under the control of Satan anymore. You cannot be, you can, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot be defeated anymore. Because the price has been paid. Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. He has redeemed you from the cause of the law. Because the mission of Satan. Let's go to John chapter 10. The book of John chapter 10. Fast, fast 10. John chapter 10. Fast 10. The book of John chapter 10. Fast 10. Because the mission of Satan. The Bible says, The thief cometh not. Jesus said, The thief with Satan cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I come that they might have life, and they and that they may might have life and have it more abundantly. He said the thief, enemy, the thief, Satan, he cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I come to, to break his power. I come to to, to 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 take the power from him. I come to take authority from him so that he cannot destroy you anymore. He cannot steal your joy anymore. He cannot kill your vision anymore. Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. Because the cause of the law gave Satan power to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when Christ paid the price, he stopped the oppression of the wicked. He stopped, he stopped the oppression of the wicked. Brother and sister, you are free. You are free. And whosoever the Son of God has set free, he shall be free indeed. You are free. You are free. It's a mind thing. It's a mind thing. As man thinketh, so he will be. If you think and see under the bondage, you will remain under the bondage. But if you now, if you now get the right revelation that Christ has paid, has paid the price. He has paid the price for your head. He has paid the price for your promotion. He has paid the price from your, for your prosperity. That's now no condemnation. No, don't, don't, walk, don't, don't be condemned. Don't feel condemned. Don't be condemned. Don't feel defeated. Don't be defeated. Your master has paid the price. He has paid the price. The thief come in now, but to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come so that you may have life. Christ came so that you may have life. You know, he said it is finished. He, he fulfilled all the scripture. He, defe he defeated Satan. He brought down the wall, the middle wall of partition. That, that made it, it, so that there's no difference between Jew and Gentile anymore. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile anymore. He broke down the wall of partition. So that the, the opportunity... Adam, uh, um, the, the descendant of Jacob, uh, Jacob had, we have the same, uh, we have the same opportunity. He said, Christ has redeemed all from the cause of the law, so that the blessing of the Abraham must come upon the Gentile. Before Christ paid the price, the blessing of Abraham is limited to the descendant of, of Jacob. But now, because Christ has paid the price, is that the, is the blood, that blessing, we are partaker of that the same blessing. We are partaker of the same blessing. What, what do you enjoy? We are permitted to enjoy the same thing. Because we are descendants of Abraham by faith, by true faith. True faith. He said he, 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 he redeemed all from the cause of the law. 
because of the law that has placed every burden on us. Because of the law that said, when we sin, we will die. He has redeemed us so that we can enjoy the, the, the blessing of Abraham. He said, it is finished. It is finished. Now we can have a access, direct access to God. Direct access to God. Direct access to God. Now in Hebrew, chapter 10. Let's go to the book of Hebrew, chapter 10. The book of Hebrew, chapter 10. I will read. Hebrew chapter 10, I will read from verse 19. Hebrew chapter 10, I will read from verse 19. Oh God. Hebrew chapter 10, I will read from verse 19. He said, He says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see, we have a direct access to God now. Now, after Christ has paid the price, we are now have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We are, I, I, I priest only can, can I, I, I priest alone can enter before. Now, we can now enter that place free of charge. We free of charge. We cannot have, have we cannot, we cannot access to, to God. We have direct access to God now. Before, the, the, the access is limited to the high priest. But now, it's no more high priest. It's, it's, the access is open to all believers. The access is open to all believers. To all believers. He said, it is finished. You have direct access to God now. Now he cancel the reign of death over mankind. The cancellation of the reign of death. Like, death, could, death could not reign over, over our life anymore. He conquered Satan. He took the key from Satan. And the death could not reign over our life anymore. No situation is permitted to molest your life. No power is permitted to oppress you. Because the price has been paid. He said, it is finished. Everything you ever need has been deposited in you. The battle has been won already. But you must, you must have this, you must, you must have, you must have this understanding to take delivery of, of what Christ has done for you. No situation is permitted to keep you perpetually down. You are, not, you are not permitted to fail. You are not permitted to be molested by the, by the devil. You are not permitted to be oppressed anymore because Christ has paid the price. Sky is not the limit. You can, as far as you can see, you can go as far as you can see now because the price has been paid. The price has been paid. The price has been paid. And now it comes to the power of sin. The sin can no long, longer reign over your life. The sin can no longer reign over your life because Jesus has paid the price. Don't worry about what you, what you did yesterday. The only thing you need to do is that if any man confess his sin, he will have mercy. If you confess your sin, God will forgive you. God will forgive you. Because there's now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ, you, are not, you can't be condemned anymore. Don't let anybody condemn you. Don't let, allow anybody to, anybody to condemn you. Because Christ has paid the price. Christ has redeemed you. He has paid the price. And he said to, he, and he said to you all today, that it is finished. Everything is required. For man to reign no hell, everything required for you to reign, to sign, it is finished. Say, so I'll pay the price. You do, what Christ has paid for, you don't need to pay for it again. What Christ has paid for, you don't need to suffer for it again. Because the price has been paid. The price has been paid. That sickness in your body is not permitted to kill you. Because Christ has paid the price. It was wounded for your transgression. 
He was bruised for your iniquity. The judgment that brought us brought to you peace was laid upon you, and by his strife you are healed. You are healed. You just need to take delivery of what Christ has done for you. You just need to believe what Christ has done for you. If you believe it, you apply it, it will work for you because the price has been paid and there's now no condemnation. Sin cannot reign over your life anymore. Sickness cannot reign over your life anymore. Difficulty, challenging cannot overcome your life anymore because Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. So that every blessing God promised Abraham, we might enjoy it as a believer. We might enjoy it as a believer. We might enjoy it as a believer. Now, he paid the price and it is finished so that he made peace. So that God is no longer angry with man anymore. God is no longer angry with you anymore. Don't think I'm, because what I'm going to do because what I did years back. No. Unfortunately, you can't go back. You can't correct the past. God is no longer angry with you anymore. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. Don't let any, anybody make you feel bad because God is no longer angry with man anymore. Because Christ has paid the price. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty. Christ has paid the price. He has made peace between man and God. He made peace between God and man. Let's go to Colossians. The book of Colossians chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1, I will read. Colossians chapter 1, I will read from verse 20 and 20, 20, 22. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 and 22. Oh God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Colossians chapter 1, I will read from verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, I say, whether there be thing in hell or thing in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemy in your mind by wicked war, yet now have had irreconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you only an unblameable and Unreprovable in his side, making peace. He made peace. He made peace. He made peace. He, God is no longer angry with you. God is no longer angry with you because Christ has paid the price. Christ has paid the price. He has paid the price. In the Old Testament, the blood of the animal is required. But in the new dispensation, Christ entered once and for all. Is he will enter, sacrifice his own life, and he said, It is finished. That pain, that difficulty, that challenges, that shame and reproach, God is saying to you, It is finished. That worry, that fear of unknown, God is saying to you, It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished because Christ has paid the price. We have peace with God. We have peace with God. What would the claim of Satan has been satisfied? What, what enemy require that when we sin, we shall die? Christ paid for it. Christ paid for, for it. Christ paid for it so that Satan can no longer have dominion over all. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, I will read verse 7. Oh, talk. To God be the glory. He said, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. In Christ we have redemption. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. God, you have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. God is no longer angry with you. You have been forgiven. Don't let your mind tell you otherwise. Don't allow your mind to tell you otherwise. You have been forgiven. The price Christ paid. He paid for your sin in the past. The present and the future. Even the one you haven't committed, he already paid for it. He already paid for it. He already paid for it. Don't walk guilty. Don't feel guilty. 
enter into his into into his into his, into his presence with boldness, with boldness, not because of your righteousness, but by the righteousness of Christ. Because our righteousness is like a fitting rack. But we are enter his presence, we are enter his throne by the righteousness of Christ. Because Christ has paid the price. He has redeemed us from the cause of the law. We are no more condemned in the presence of God. But we are righteous. We are righteous. We are righteous. He said, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. In the Old Testament, when they sin, God can still remember their sin after he can remember their sin up to fourth generation. But in our in our time, when God forgives you, He will never remember, He will remember it anymore. He wipe it off. The blood of Jesus is able to wipe off all your mistakes. It's able to wipe off all your sin. All you just need is to, to, to confess your sin, you repent, and you will be forgiven. It doesn't matter how many times you ask for forgiveness because God will never suffer his faithfulness away. He said, if, if you confess and forsake your sin, you will have mercy. Then repent. Therefore, repent. When you repent, if you don't repent, you can't be forgiven. But as long as you can humble enough to repent of your sin. And this time, you don't need to go to the high priest to, re to repent, to confess to the high priest. No. Because the word of partition that make a difference between high priest and the, and the congregation is be, it has been broken down. You don't need to go and confess to the pastor. You confess to God. Wherever you are, you can confess to God and God will hear you. You just need to say, God, I'm sorry. Have mercy. He will remember. God didn't see your sin. But he, he only looked at the price Christ paid on the cross. He looked at his own only because his son. In John 3, 16, he said, said, For God also loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting. When you believe in him, you can't perish because of sin. No, you can't. You can't. As long as you can confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you. Because in Christ we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin. The the forgiveness of sin. Brother and sister, don't, don't think God is still angry with you. God is no longer angry with man. Today is a special day in our Christian walk. If the, today hasn't happened in human history, there won't be any, anything like salvation. But today, we have, we have, we have the victory. Today, we have, we have joy that we we, we are now sons and daughters of God. We have hope that when we die, internal, in, internal life is awaiting us. Brother and sister, God is no longer angry with you because Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the Lord. Psalm 130, verse 7. Psalm number 130, verse 7. Oh God, he said, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is a mercy, and with Him is a plenteous redemption. Let the believer hope in the Lord, because in God there is a mercy. God is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful Father. He's a merciful Father. Don't think, uh, uh, Pastor, you don't know what I have done. It doesn't matter what you have done before. It doesn't matter what you have done before. What Christ did <laughs> supersede what you will have done before. What Christ did on the cross is supersede all things. He said, it is finished. It is finished. I've done it. It is finished. He said, God. He said, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with, with the Lord, there is a mercy. And with him is a plenteous redemption. There's no way man can be redeemed. They try in the Old Testament to, to appeal to God through the blood of animals. But it doesn't take away sin. It covers sin for the, for the for the certain period of time. But God can still remember uh, remember that their sin. But when Christ enter, when Christ enter, He said His blood. He said it is finished. Father, I've, I've finished. And, and Father was happy because His Son died. 
for you and me. So, so that we may know, so that Satan could no longer rule over our life. That that day, like Friday, Satan says, uh, Satan cry because man I escape. Man escape from his dominion. My escape from his, from his palace. You know that he has lost the battle. Because the king of kings and the lord of law have redeemed us from the cause of the law. From the cause of the law. From the cause of the law. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. Christ have done it. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. And God read it. God is sent to the book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. He said, as for you, also, as for you also who believe in Christ Jesus, you may not you, you may not you may not come from the descendant of Jacob, but by faith, said, as for you also, as for you, Gentile also, by the blood of their covenant, have set for their prisoner out of the pit where there's no water. We are in the pit, we are in the spirit, we are in the spiritual prison. But by the blood of the covenant, by the blood of the new covenant, the blood of Christ, God has set you free. He has set me free. He has set your household free. You are free. And whomsoever the Son of God has set free, he shall be free. You are free. By the blood he said on the, on the cross of Calvary, you are free. I am free. I am free. We are free. He said, he has set, he said the prisoner. We are prisoners under the old covenant. But under the new covenant, we are, we are, no, we are no longer prisoners. We are free. 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 Brother and sister, we are free. We are free. Let's go to Galatians. Let's, let's go to Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. The book of Galatians chapter 1, I will read verse 4. Oh, God, Christ has redeemed us. Galatians chapter 1, I will read verse 4. Say, so, who gave himself for our sin, that he might deliver her from the present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Christ gave himself for our sin. For that sin you are worried about, that sin that couldn't allow you to sleep, that sin that, that, make, you, that, that make you lose your joy. Christ already redeemed you from that sin. He already delivered you from that sin. Don't let your mind deceive you. Don't let your mind. It's not about how you feel. It's about the word of God. Your feeling may be contrary to the word of God. But you must believe what Christ has done on your behalf. Say, Christ, who gave himself for our sin that he might deliver her from the present evil world. In this present evil world, you will be condemned, you will feel condemned, you will feel guilty. But Christ has paid the price. He said, it is finished. It is finished. When he said it is finished, it is finished. Because he has satisfied, he already satisfied the requirement. What the Lord required, he already satisfied that the soul that sins shall die. That's why he took your place, he took my place, and he died for our sin. The dead we supposed to suffer, Christ suffered it. We are no, no longer enemy of God. We are, we are sons and daughters of God. And he does not yet appear what, what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall be like him. Because he already redeemed us from the cause of the law. From the cause of the law. He said, he has delivered us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Christ has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. And he, when he has redeemed us. And God, he called us to return unto him because we have, we have the redeemed of the Lord. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22. The book of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22. Oh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Isaiah 44, verse 22. We are the redeemed of the Lord. And Christ is calling us. They return to me. Return to me. Don't be guilty. Don't 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 dunk us. Don't 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 feel. Don't you are not you are not you are not a candidate to be pity. You are a candidate to be envy. He said, "Return to me. Return to me." Isaiah forty-four, 
verse 22. Verse 22. I want you to hear this. He said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud their transgression, and as a cloud their sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. <laughs> he said, Your transgression, your sin, I've removed them. Return to me. Return to me. You turn to me. You don't need to go through the high priest. You just enter. Enter into the throne, into his presence with praise. Into the court with praise. Enter. Enter. You cannot enter boldly because I've blot out, blot out your transgression, your sin. Would make you guilty. Remember what's happened in the book in Genesis chapter 3. The day Adam and Eve sinned, they couldn't stand God. They fear shame. That sin that makes you fear shame. That, that behavior that you, you, uh, you always be embarrassed when you are in the midst of people. Jesus said to you today, Say, I've blotted out that transgression. I've blotted out that sin. Return to me. Just return to me. Come unto me. All you that labor that have every ability, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You don't need, you don't need to cry anymore. You don't need to weep anymore. My son have done it. You have blocked out that trick. That's I don't even remember that scene. It's you. It's his enemy that bring that, uh, that imagination. It's his enemy that bring that evil thought. He said, I have blocked out your transgression. I have blocked out your sin. You return to me. Return to me. Return to me. Because it's not about your righteousness. It's about the righteousness of my son. Jesus Christ. Return. You are redeemed. We are the redeemed of the Lord. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord so we have been bought with a price. Christ bought us by his blood. By his blood. By his blood. Our transgression, our sin has been blotted. As it has been blotted how? As a thick, thick cloud. Our transgression, our sin. He said, return unto me for I have redeemed thee. God will not lie. He has redeemed us. Yeah, you can say, Pastor, I don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. It's not about your feeling. You don't have to feel it. But the truth of the matter is that Christ has done the deal. He has saved the deal. He has finished it. He has, he has paid in full. He said, it is finished. It is finished. Now, you are now need to exercise your faith. So that you can walk. You can walk as, a, as somebody that has been set free. So that you can walk as a redeemer of the law. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is spiritual. And the, the profession has been made in the realm of the spirit that you are free. Now you have to tune your mind. You, you have to reprogram your mind. He it said, it said, do not be conformed to this war. Because the war will tell you that when you do A, you, you will get the punishment. When you do B, you get the punishment. Say, do not be conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renew of your mind. Renew your mind. You just need to renew your mind. You just need to renew your mind. Some of us will be thinking about what we did 20 years ago. Unfortunately, you won't be able to go back. Some, some, some people will say, I did something last week. It doesn't really matter. It's too, it's too late now. Past is past. Let past go. Paul said, what thing, one thing I did. Forget those things that are behind. What behind is behind what behind is behind? What matter now is what is what lies ahead of you? And God is saying to you today that I've redeemed you. Walk in the light of that revelation. Walk in the light of that revelation. Because what happened yesterday, you can't undo it. You can't undo it. It's a waste of time to worry about what, what to worry about the past. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's a waste of, of opportunity. But looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of, of your faith. Looking unto him because he already paid the price. He has redeemed you. And he's saying to you that your sins have been blotted out. Rejoice in the Lord. He said, return to me. Return to me. Return. Return to me. Return into, into him. Lord, he said, return to me because God has provided redemption for his people. Let's go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111, verse 9. Psalm 111, verse 9. Oh God, oh God, I'm so excited. Oh God is good. Psalm 111, verse 9. 
He said, He sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. God sent redemption. He sent Christ. He said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He sent his redemption. He sent Christ to redeem mankind. Because any Satan have, 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 have maltreated man, he has, he, has, he has destroyed things because the thief coming not, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Christ came, he said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. And today, because you have been redeemed, I want you to say enough to that situation. To say enough to that situation, that circumstances, that worry, that pain, that sickness, that disappointment, that, that, that marriage cri crisis, that business crisis, I want to say enough to enough is enough to that situation today. Because Christ said to Satan, said, enough is enough. What you require of man, I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll pay. Whatever he has been, pay, has been paying your behalf, you don't have to pay for it again. You don't pay for, for a good twice. No. You can only pay for it once. He said, I'll pay. And then when he, when he paid, Satan couldn't lay any claim on man again. Because the soul that sin must die. That's the law. That's the, that, that's the law. That's the law. But he has redeemed us from the, because of that law through his blood. You must say enough is enough to that situation. Don't think it's going to go automatic. No. I say on Wednesday, nothing happens automatic in the kingdom. Don't let anybody deceive you. Nothing, you don't sit down and wish for victory. And wish, I, I wish I, I can, no. <laughs> it don't happen. You must, you must take delivery from the altar of prayer because with the heart, man believes. But until you confess it, it's not established. With the heart, man believes unto salvation. But until confidence is made, Nothing is established. Brother and sister, we don't, when you close your, close your mouth, you close the destiny. We, the destiny will be, will be, an enemy will tamper with your destiny. But when you, when only you can speak. God said to Moses, he said, speak unto the rock. You, God requires you to speak. You have to speak over that situation. You have to speak over that worry and fear of unknown. You have to speak over that anxiety. You have to speak over that sickness and it is an enough. He said, no. Christ has paid for it. Christ has paid for it. When you, when you are sick in your body, you can decree and declare that, oh, I'm now being translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Satan, you have no claim on my body. My body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, you, you stranger, you must leave. Because Christ has paid, he has wounded for my transgression, he was bruised for my iniquity. When you go, when you let Satan realize that, realizes that, he will leave. He said, resist the devil, he will flee. Until you resist the enemy, enemy will do more harm. I say on Wednesday, he said, because sentence was not exercised speedily against the evil work of the enemy, therefore the son of man said in their heart to do more evil. Until you resist the devil, the devil will not go. He will not go. Until you resist that situation, that situation may not change. Whatever you don't want, you, you rebuke it. But any, anything you don't rebuke, have the right to remain. You don't say that, uh, I'm, uh, it's pain, it's pain. It's, the, you remember? He said, let the weak say, I am strong because you have been redeemed. By the blood. So let the poor say, I am rich. And if God said, as your mouth has spoken, so I will do. From today, you know now, you are, you are now, you understand that you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You have been redeemed. Therefore, you don't, you don't need to, to get worried anymore. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. And you will never, you will never be under the bondage again, again. He has redeemed you. He has, he has rescued, rescued us. He rescued us. Satan kept us under the bondage, but Christ, through his blood on the cross, has rescued us. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
First Corinthians chapter 1, I will read verse 12 to 14. First Colossians chapter 1, uh, the Colossians chapter 1, sorry. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Oh God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Give it thanks unto the Father, which has made us, me, to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered her from the power of darkness? You see? Who has delivered her from the power of darkness? Before. That's why I said that when you are sick in your body, you cannot say to yourself that Christ has redeemed you from the power of darkness. I have been now translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of, of, of the marvelous light. Because, he said, who has redeemed us? Who has redeemed us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. He rescued us. He, re he redeemed us and delivered us from the power of Darkness. Remember, I say, I say on Wednesday, Christ came to deliver us, to redeem us, and to restore what we are Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. And today, you have now understand, you have now come to realize that you have been redeemed. I said, let the redeem of the law say so. Let the redeem of the law say so. He took your case and he redeemed you. Let's go to Lamentation chapter 3. The book of Lamentation chapter 3. I will read from verse 57 to 58. He took your case and he has redeemed you from the cause of the law. Your case that you, can, you couldn't defend on your own. Your case that you don't even know, know what to say. Christ took your case. La Lamentation chapter 3. I will read from verse 57. From verse 57 to 58. Lamentation chapter 3. From verse 57 to 58. Thou draw near in the day. And I call upon thee. Thou said, fear not. Because that case you couldn't defend it on your own. Because Adam or Satan took the key from Adam. And God said to you, he said, fear not. Uh, uh, 58. O oh Lord, thou art pleaded the cause of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. God pleaded your cause. He, 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 he stood on your behalf and redeemed you from the cause of the law. And he silenced enemy. Today, you have that the power to silence every force of accuser. You have the power to silence every force of the enemy. You have the power to silence every form of condemnation because there's now no, now no condemnation to, to hit the door that I'm in Christ. Because Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. He pleaded your cause. He has redeemed you so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentile. And now there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Born or slave. And now you as a Gentile, me as a Gentile, can enter to the, to the throne room of grace with boldness. So therefore I can say, Abba, Father. But brother and sister, as from today, don't walk with your head bowed. No. Walk with your chest out. That I am the redeemer of the law. I am a child of God. The spirit of the Lord bearing witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. You have to be bold because Christ already redeemed you from the cause of the law. The wall of partition has been broken. He said, it is finished. The deed has been done. It is a done deal. It's a done deal. Satan understood the, the language that it is finished. 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 Now there's no enchantment against you. And now there's any divination against you. Because Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. Rejoice in the law. I say, rejoice. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. 
this way. As you go, as you as you go out in this Easter weekend, I want you to have at the back of your mind that you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus. And remember that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What do you say? What do you say? When you are faced with any challenges that you contradict to the word God has spoken concerning your life, you can, re you can reject it. You, you, can, you can rebuke it because you have been redeemed. Don't let any man bring condemnation. Don't let people make you feel bad. Don't let make people feel uh, make you feel as, as, as if you are a worse, worse sinner. The price is being paid. Christ paid for your sin in the past, now in the future. All what you just need, believe in, the, in what he has done. And even when you sin, you have we have an advocate. When we sin, we can now come to the Father and say, Father, have mercy, forgive us. And if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you. Rejoice. Rejoice. I say, rejoice. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face sign upon you. God be gracious unto you and make you walk in dominion. And make you walk in victory. But I don't want to close this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to amend your way. As you hear, Christ redeem us from the cause of the law. And the cause of the law says that the soul that sin must die. If you don't want to die, if you don't want to die spiritually, you have to accept Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. Because except man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. For it, for it is appointed for man once to die. You don't die twice, you die once. And after that, judgment. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And many your way, tomorrow may be too late. Because of your sin, because of my sin, Christ came and died today. As I said at 3 o'clock, I said, it is finished. Now, you have a part to play. I have a part to play. You, and my part is to believe what he has done. My part is to confess him as my Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you are out there. Holy Spirit is ministering to you that I have to amend my way. I've gone last way. I have to amend my way. Remember I said, I said, come to me. Come unto me because I've, rede I've redeemed you. Amend your way. Tomorrow may be too late. For the trumpet we sound and the dead in Christ arise again. We that we are alive shall be cut off to meet the Lord. Tomorrow may be too late. You have today. And whatsoever your hand plan to do, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Christ has paid for your, you pay for your sin. You just need to acknowledge what he has done and say, I'm sorry. God, have mercy on me. If you in that category, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I acknowledge my sin. Forgive me. I believe what you have done on the cross on my behalf. Accept me. I, I, de I declare you as my Lord and personal Savior. If you have prayed that simple prayer, because with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made, I believe you are born again. But you don't stay, stay there. But you must join. Join us. Join us. Join us. In 281 to 283 Riley, Peckham, London, SE15 for UA. Our church is Beneficia Financial Christ Church. And if you need a direction, you can send, send out a, uh, a message and we get back to you. God bless you. Enjoy your Easter weekend. Till I see you next time. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.